Hello, hello. Hello there. Hi. Hi. Good morning. How are you? Good morning. I'm okay. Good. Is it morning where you are? No, it's um half past one thirty. Right. Yeah. Right. Right. Yeah. So just trying to juggle the time zones. I find myself like messaging my students, and I'll start with good morning, and then I'll be like, wait a minute, <laughs> you're in China. It's evening there. Yeah. Yeah. I've gotten used to it over time, but I know it's a little bit tricky yeah, sometimes it is it is where are your students generally located um uh moscow i have some moscow some poland some uh and actually one in manchester oh gosh um uh taiwan most most in taiwan and yeah. hong kong right okay cool wow very cool. I, th I heard things just got difficult teaching Russian students because it's difficult to get money in and out. Yeah. Uh, Hi, Crystal. Hi, Scott. Hey, June. Hi. How's it going? <laughs> good, good. I'm having some trouble because we had an earthquake last night and we had intermittent power and internet issues today. Oh, my gosh. Is everyone okay? You never get a break over there, eh? Yeah, I believe I believe everyone's okay, but yeah, it was a little disturbing because I was sleeping and then 4 a.m. we had like these three tremors and I was thinking, oh my gosh, is it really going to be like a zombie apocalypse and then World War III and then this is how I'm going to go out? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> they're always a little scary. I remember them from when I was living in Japan and sometimes it was like small and you just carry on your day and sometimes it was not small and you were like, Oh my goodness, should I be evacuating? Yeah. First you get the drought, yeah, and then you had the, <laughs> oh. the war, the missiles, and then now you have the earthquakes. Yeah. Oh my goodness. Oh, it's never boring. Can't get a break, man. No. Wow. Um, so are we expecting others or um Melody's coming, right? Melody is. Right? Okay. It's yeah, and I, and I believe um, Alex will be coming. I think Alex, um, she told me she may miss the first 10 or 15 minutes, but let me message her now just to confirm. Melody said she'd miss? What'd she say? Yeah, because Melody I thought... said she'd miss. I think, I think Melody can attend for the first 30 minutes. That was, that's what Melody told me. Can attend. Okay. And then... Alex is the gentleman in Ukraine. Yeah. Okay. Got it. Cool. Exciting. So I've had some drama this morning because I was thinking for starters, how wonderful that remote HQ came back around having reconsidered. So yay. Yeah. That's interesting. Um, but then when that happened, I was like, so what's the sense in conducting the training over zoom if we're going to be predominantly using remote HQ. So I was going to email you guys and be like, okay, can we update the link? However, I think it's quite important to be able to download and share the recording with you to put on your channels, to put on mine um, and be able to reuse. And I couldn't see a way within the remote HQ portal to download it. So I've been back and forth with Lewis, who's the CTO at Remote HQ trying to sort out what's going on with that because my portal doesn't look the same as his and he's insisting that you can download it. I'm like, yeah, but I don't have those three dots. So um, we didn't unfortunately get it in time. So what I was thinking was I could just screen share, um, screen share what I do on Remote HQ. And if it helps, somebody from this call could actually dial into that one because some of the features in Remote HQ only show up when you have uh, another party present. Would that work for you too? Yep, no problem. Okay, brilliant. So hopefully, yeah, sounds good. hopefully that, you know, covers most of the ground. So we'll give everyone another couple minutes and then they can always just catch up or catch the replay. Okay. Yeah. So how is it going like behind the scenes? What's, what's happening at the moment? Um, we're just uh, setting up the student sign up kind of process. So 
So uh, right now we're looking at a, an app called, uh, what is it called? Pick Time. Okay. Pick, picktime.com. Have you heard of that before? No. Just looking at it. I'm not sure if it's the right thing, but the um, right one for us, but just taking a look. Anyway, we should just setting up the finishing the student sign up process because then hopefully things will be a little more automated. Right now, we're just kind of sending links directly to students. So that's kind of a pain. Yeah. So we're just trying to get that kind of process going. And then it should just be uh, mostly automated, just like teachers jumping in, students jumping in, and then no one having to micromanage everything. So hopefully we'll get that set up soon. Super. Yeah. That's so good. I sent a teacher your way. I don't know if she's Did been you? in touch already. Um, a fantastic teacher who used to work for VIP Kids. She's a fully qualified public school teacher in Florida, I think. And okay. um, she was wanting to get involved and had heard of Brenda's group. And I said, no, no, no. I have something better for you. <laughs> yes, yes. So um, if Send them all to us. Allison Wisnerk <laughs> uses your contact form on your website, she's from me. Cool. Excellent. Yeah. Good. Do you want more? Like, should I be advertising for teachers? We, uh, yeah, we, we could scale up to to thousands of students. So the more teachers we have, the better, but of course we okay. have to balance, uh, reaching out to as many teachers as possible while also, uh, filtering out the ones who don't meet our standards. Exactly. And is that contact form on the site, the best way to register their interest? Yep, it's connected to a spreadsheet. So we'll have all the emails, everything just uh, organized nicely and it'll be no problem to reach out to them soon. I'll yeah. That. yeah, cool. Awesome. Hi, Melody. Good to see you again. Thank you. <laughs> good to see you too. And I'm so sorry that I'm late. I just That's finished okay. the lesson. <laughs> oh, good. Good for you. No, I know how that can be. So for sure. Yeah. Thank you. All right. So do you guys want to start? Yeah, yeah I'm course. ready. Let's do it. I, let's high do five. it. High five. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> I'll do like a little um, opening so that when I cut the top and the bottom from this video, it's hopefully doesn't require more editing. Is that okay? Okay. Okay. So um, I will say something about like, this is a training for what, what do you guys want me to say? What should I call this and how should I you know, um, link to everyone, everyone involved. It's, it's an introduction to uh, crystal clear ESL learning materials and the remote HQ application thing. Okay, but don't you guys want to mention <laughs> like for the purpose? This is an introduction for. Yeah, maybe, but uh, maybe, maybe you can use it, you know, somewhere else. Who knows? Okay. All right. I don't know. I, <laughs> I, I don't know. Uh, the, the right people will see this. Uh, yeah. I don't think we need to explain too much. Yeah, but I agree. And you, we can we can add wording anyways to like text. Yeah. Okay, great. Okay. Welcome everyone. This is Crystal from Crystal Clear ESL. I'm here providing a live training for the folks at foreignteachers.org on how to teach Crystal Clear ESL lesson material over the uh, co-browsing app Remote HQ. So hopefully this is a great opportunity for you to see what's involved and how to navigate all the tools. Are you guys ready? Yep. We're ready. We're ready. Okay. So let's start by sharing screen. I'm going to just bring you over to the homepage of the Crystal Clear ESL website. This is, um, you know, this is where you will land if you visit esl-curriculum.com, but this is not where you will start teaching your lessons. If you are doing prep, for example, you can log into your dashboard and view the lesson library through this. There's a little icon down the bottom here with the sort of profile, and um, that's how you'll, a you'll access the dashboard. But when you come to teach a lesson, what you will need to do is log into Remote HQ. So co-browsing is a brand new thing. Um, you will probably be familiar with screen sharing, which is what I'm doing now, but co-browsing is totally different in that it's a remote browser. So um, this way, both yourself and your students can interact with the lesson equally. Everybody can drag and drop, everybody can write on the slides and it makes for the best interactivity. So this is what a dashboard looks like. You will probably be supplied with something like this as well as instructions for which um, room is applicable to your lesson. 
they'll all be labeled. I'm gonna show you the crystal clear meeting room. And these rooms, um, they stay as they are. So this page will sort of always look like this and you'll scroll down and you'll see more rooms. And then each room will change because you will add sessions within the room. And it's a great mechanism for tracking. So if we went and looked, for example, um, at John, nine years old, who is one of my students, you can see in the archives here or in the um, artifacts here, his past lessons, any um, homework affiliated with his unit that he's working at. They also, um, this one, for example, has recordings that the client can then replay, which is really helpful. So whether or not that's enabled is up to our friends at foreignteachers.org, pardon me. But you can see each of these is a session and this would be like the lesson number. So level four, unit one, lesson one. And then the A is because the teacher didn't actually finish that whole lesson. So they've split it into A and B. So I'll go back <clears throat> and start a session in Crystal Clear Meeting. So it's a lot like what you're probably used to with Zoom or um, uh, I don't know what you're using, Skype, in terms of logging in and in terms of the functionality. Um, taking its time to load. Right now it's loading the remote browser. So you don't actually have to use a remote browser. You can use apps, you can just do um, audio video streaming. It works on all of these platforms. But if you are using the remote browser, what you're gonna do is just what you would do for a, um, an original login. So you pretend that you're starting from scratch and logging into the website. So let's have a look. I can put the website www.eslcurriculum.com here. It says open in remote browser. And then what I do is I drag the icon on in the gutter here. So sort of top right into the middle of the screen and it loads my web page. Okay, so I showed you earlier on my actual web page that you access the dashboard here. So I'm going to take you through the steps now. You input the email address provided to you by the foreignteachers.org team. Let's see if I can remember my own password and the password which they'll provide. And this is how you get into the lesson library. Ta-da! Okay, so your lesson library is here. Your first three enrollments are at the top, but you can scroll down to view all my courses. And then you can scroll down again and see everything, all the lesson material that's available to you. So let's go choose a nice level five lesson. Most likely, these will be in a sequence. So there'll be some way to keep track of what's been taught before so that you can pick the next one in, the, in a row because they all sort of puzzle together, <laughs> if you will. Um, let's choose this one. So this is an actual lesson. The lesson plan is built into the um, into the page. And what you're gonna do, oh, I didn't click accept. You're gonna click the three dots in the lower right corner of the lesson plan, and then the open to full screen option. And that just bumps it out into full screen mode. Now, it's probably a good idea at this point to invite one of you to join me in Remote HQ so that we can see all of the um, all of the controls that are available. So let me come back to Zoom and I'll drop this in the chat and then anybody who wants to pop over can do so. There you go. The link is unique so you can um, you can share that with the student and they can join the same session anytime. Wait rooms, waiting rooms are still being implemented. So if the link is out there, oh, thanks, Melody. Um, if the link is out there, you may get people dropping in uninvited, but you can kick them out. So don't worry about that. 
Let me just say a little bit about permissions. So Melody, do you want to explain to us what you were asked in order to enter this remote HQ classroom? Uh, I think the voice is creating some echo because we're both using using the audio from Zoom. Okay. Is that better? <laughs> okay, good. So if you can hear me, okay. I was just wondering what um, what Remote HQ asked you to do in terms of logging into the session. You had to give your name and anything else. Was there a permissions box that popped up? Yeah, okay, there was a permissions box, perfect. Um, so yeah, that's important. I've just muted you on here. Um, that's important because if you accept the permissions and you have the right camera and microphone loaded as a student, you're good to go. Everything will log in fine. If you make a change to the suggested camera and microphone or decline the permissions, you actually have to then go out, close down your browser and do it all again because the browser doesn't like refresh, if you see what I mean. And it should then work the second time. But in order to get audio and video in remote HQ, you do have to approve those permissions. So we're in full screen mode, and this is where it gets really cool. If you, Scott and Melody, want to change the slide, you can do so here. Yeah, exactly. And I can actually stop you from changing the slide with permissions in on my side, which you can see. So I can say private to members only, um, which are like registered teachers, a member is. Guests can view or guests who can control. And then let's say you're teaching a big group and they're all scribblers. <laughs> We've been there. Um, you can actually select who has control. So this is really optimal for turn taking because you can turn everybody off except one student and then, you know, swap it around for the next activity. So that makes it super easy. Um, I'll just change that for the moment. Guests can control. Okay. So the other really cool thing is the customizability of the layout. So I can grab myself, let's say, and drag me over to the side. I can grab Melody and put you here. I can grab Scott and replace you um, or put you, you know, here. It's totally customizable. And then if I want you off the screen, I just minimize and off you go. I can also drag. So if I am doing this um, full panel screen, I can make me smaller and the slideshow bigger by just dragging the center line. So that's quite easy. And um, there is some confusion with what the students see. So Scott and Melody, yours might not look the same as mine because you do have to go down to the bottom where it says layout and share your layout with participants, which should update to what I'm seeing. It's important to share your layout because otherwise the student is gonna remain over there in the gutter and they're not necessarily gonna know how to drag their video feed um, front and center. You can also track a layout. So follow, it, follow my layout will mean that it's not just at one point in time, but they're tracking it throughout the class. So that's really helpful. Um, in terms of other functions, there are reactions. So I use these as rewards. And if you hover over the reactions button and you press your shift key, you can actually access more reactions. You get a trophy. So there's lots there. And then um, if you are leaving feedback for students, which is something that I do privately, you can actually open the apps. Oh, you have to add permissions for this somewhere or other. Can't remember where they said. Share. Well, anyway, so you can see it on my screen. I'll have to take another look at that. But you open the apps, click on notes. It's added the notes here. Oh, here's the permissions. Guests can view or guests can edit. And then during class time or after I've kicked the student out of my class, I can write my notes um, in here and this auto populates to the session artifacts. So that means that when you're outside the session, there's a list of files, including the class recording, if you have that plan, um, 
that are stored potentially forever. And you can create a shareable link to all of those artifacts to share with your students if you want to. So that's quite cool. And then you can exit out and it just auto saves. So in terms of teaching the crystal clear ESL lesson, I did mention they're all sequential. I try to build in the four language acquisition skills. So there's normally something per unit that covers speaking, listening, reading, and writing. In the lower levels, phonics will be um, targeted as well. And you'll find that they have a sequence to them. So normally we start with vocabulary, then we move on to um, some kind of grammar point, then there's some kind of reading and we end off with a summative, a close exercise um, or a game. At the moment, Remote HQ has not got um, annotation capability built into the remote browser, but that's okay because the lesson plan itself does. So any party with permission can access these uh, colors and pen option and they can draw anything they can write answers. There are some slides that actually include a text box where the student can type, but this is second to remote HQ. It's a feature of the slide itself, of the lesson plan itself. Um, and then you can just erase it and so forth. So let me try to find a slide that has an interactive feature. You can see um, tiles of all the slides in those three buttons at the bottom right. And then you can just scroll through. Like, let's say your, your lesson is going by way too uh, fast and you have to cut out some slides, for example, then just scroll through, skip a few <laughs> and you're good to go. So this one, for example, has some features. Teaching tips are often available in these little pop-up icons. So drag or draw a line to sort the adjectives from the adverbs. So this one, you, you, you or your student can just drag them to the appropriate column. And then there might also be like a reminder of the rule that pulls out. So lots of potential for interaction. Um, from a teaching perspective, I know we're probably looking at groups. So I would say it's probably not necessary to have every group member complete every activity on every slide. There's lots of opportunity, particularly where we're reviewing vocabulary, to review from slide to slide so things will come up again. And when I teach groups, I generally keep everybody on mute and I communicate with the student or the parent in advance, like you're expected to say things along with us, even if you're on mute because they're listening and they're producing content. Um, but then when it's their turn or their slide, I'll unmute them. I'll maybe drag them out of the gutter, <laughs> which sounds awful, doesn't it? It's just the terminology. Um, and, you know, highlight them on the screen and then let them do the activity. And it depends on the timing. So the crystal clear lessons are ideally based for a 25 minute lesson, but that is at an incredibly speedy pace. So if you're teaching a lesson that's 40 minutes, you could kind of slow the pace down and it would be perfect. If you're teaching a lesson that's an hour, you may have to draw in supplementary material, which is totally easy to do using Remote HQ because on this remote browser, you'll remember there were multiple tabs available. So if I come out of full screen mode for the lesson plan, it's just like using Chrome or Firefox, which you're used to. You just open another tab, you open WordWall, or you open a YouTube clip and have it ready before class, and then you toggle between the two. So you can come back to the lesson and just open it up again. So it's very easy to prepare in advance. Um, there is homework, so I'll have to discuss what the best way of providing that is. I don't know if um, you guys want that included. I'm not sure. So that's basically it. Is there, do you have any questions about using remote HQ or teaching the crystal clear lessons? So does, um, does every teacher have the same access to all of the materials? 
Yeah. So I created um, five accounts with the email addresses, your email addresses that June provided, and they are all full access. In fact, you've reminded me, Melody, I need to add in the IELTS made simple and the speak like a native because I spoke to my developer for whom I'm hosting and he was like, of course, I'm happy to donate. So um, that means you get the full range from the website. Mm. Cool, yeah. cool. Sounds yes. great. I like it. It's, it's very well organized. And like you said, it's super interactive and I can already see kids playing around and having fun. It's, it's wonderful. Yeah. Thank you so much. Oh, you're welcome. Yeah, no, it's my pleasure. Um, just to say, you're going to see developments very soon. Levels two through four are currently what we call static. So that just means that they were originally designed on PowerPoint, converted to PDF and uploaded. So they're not as dynamic as what you see here, but I have an ongoing project to upgrade them. So you'll see additions um, of these interactive versions within the next couple of weeks. And um, both versions will be available. So if your students were used to the static, you can carry on on the static or you can swap over to interactive. Cool. Oh, I have um, something to share as well. So the lessons have audio built in. So these little audio clips are built in. Your student, in order to hear them, will have to select their permissions to enable their speaker, their um, computers, like the, yeah, the computer sound or something like that. So yeah, there. if you go down to here to microphone, there's another option for speakers and they'll have to just enable that. So hopefully that can be sorted out. Otherwise you should be able to read them out yourself. So for example, in these teaching notes, it tells you what the words were. So as their English teacher, you can just say like toe, row, and then they can still do the task and it's a spelling exercise um, and it's not a problem, right? So it's just whatever's easiest for you. Um, what can you else? also show us how to share the unique link with the students? Yeah, sure. No problem. Oh, just a note about stability. If you or your student ever, you know, encounter the inevitable internet issues, there are some things, some troubleshooting tips that you can use. The first one with the remote browser is to hit reconnect, which is just like hitting a refresh button. That's usually the bit, the problem solver. The second thing that you can do is to change your video quality. So it automatically defaults to standard quality video uh, streaming, but you can go to low quality if your student doesn't have a great bandwidth or whatever. And then a pinch, you can also go to audio only. So this just turns off the video feed, but they'll still have access to the um, lesson itself and to your audio. So if you have to, you can change that. And then another thing you can do outside the lesson, I believe, is you can um, change the location of the server. So if you know that your students are in Eastern Europe, then you can find a server more local to them and try and see if it's a bit of a better connection. So those are just the main things that you can do. And I have found the remote HQ support team really good. So if you are experiencing trouble or you have questions about how to use it that I haven't covered, um, there's like a chat icon within the portal and you can chat to them and they'll usually reply quite quickly. So let's go back out and I will show you um, how to share the link. So we're gonna leave the classroom and then it'll pop up and it'll say, you know, just you or chuck everybody out, <laughs> which I'm gonna do now. And we're just coming out. It says um, feedback. So if you have any suggestions or you've had any trouble, you can leave that. You can just also ignore this box. And when it comes to sharing the room link, you create a room using the new room. Yeah, if this is like a particular group that you're teaching regularly, you would create the room specifically for them and label it something unique to them. And then it saves as one of these sort of cards. And then every time you teach that group, 
you create a session, start session within that room. And this is how you keep track of who gets what artifacts. So if you are leaving feedback, if you are sharing the recordings with the students' parents or the students themselves, these will all be available there. So in order to invite your students, you copy room link from these three buttons on the room and it copies to your clipboard and then you paste it in an email or a WhatsApp and that's all they need. It's super easy. There's no passwords involved at this point. Um, that's literally all they need. If you want to change some settings, uh, you want to rename the room, for example, you can do that here. You can control who accesses the room. Workspace members means paying registered um, remote HQ members only. So you would want to avoid that because then probably only you would be able to access. And this all has to do with the remote browser. So when I am teaching for Crystal Clear English, um, I I'm will- so sorry, Crystal. Yeah. So sorry to, so sorry to <laughs> pause you. I do have to leave. So if you don't mind, I have some questions typed in the box and maybe okay. you guys can continue and answer some of them. I'll watch the recording. Is that okay? Okay. Yep. Perfect. Thank you very much. Yes. Appreciate this. Thank you. Okay. Hey, See you. Thanks for coming. Bye. No problem. Um, Okay, so this is the settings for remote browsers. You can kind of like pre-configure how you want it to open. So this is what I meant by the browser location. You can choose one, maybe Frankfurt. I know that's not Eastern Europe, but it's closer than London. Um, you can change the browser resolution. I changed this one, which is custom URL open by default to my website homepage. So you can do that and that's then what pops up first when you open the remote browser, which is quite handy. Who can control what, what apps are enabled? Some of these are paid, others are free. So that's really handy. Um, this is what I meant by enabling the public link. So if you have artifacts like homeworks or notes, feedback, or you're recording the lessons, you will enable the public link by clicking this button here and then you'll copy this um, URL and this is what you'll send to your client and then by putting the URL in they'll have their own like mini portal where they can see a list of all the artifacts from their classes which is really handy. Um, right let's cover some of the questions that Melody had asked. So she said how to share the unique link which we went over, how to play audio only. So I did go over how to change to audio only within the classroom. Um, obviously the other thing you can do is just turn your camera off and ask your student to turn their camera off, but you can control it within those settings at the bottom, the three dots that I mentioned. Um, how to display multiple apps. It's just like tiles. So theoretically you can have as many apps, remote browser, and video feeds as you want tiled in to the classroom. It's just dragging and dropping um, and trying to configure them so that it makes sense on the workspace and then sharing that layout with your student, of course. Can we customize the feedback pop-up window? There, so the one that I use is just the blank um, sheet for notes, the notes app. I am requesting, because I did see the other templates in that app, that Remote HQ input like a standard feedback form because teaching uh, freelance situations is a re relatively new user case for remote HQ. So it's not something that they have been tailoring themselves to in the past, but they're so wonderfully welcoming with um, our ideas for how to benefit the teaching use case now. Um, so I think that's definitely something I can convince them to do is to add sort of standard questions that teachers can answer in the notes app to fill out a feedback that would then auto save to the to the artifacts. And I think that's it. So Scott, June, do you guys have anything that I haven't covered? Uh, yes, I this seems to be it just strikes me as something that might be difficult to use on a phone or a mobile device like a tablet. How would that work? So I would recommend from a teaching perspective that you you avoid a phone, especially. You can teach over an iPad or a tablet. The only requirement is that it's Safari 14.0 or greater. 
or higher. So it's definitely possible. Hi. We've had someone else join. Hi everyone. I'm terribly sorry that I'm so late. I've just finished my evening my evening class. Great. I'm Crystal. Hi, it's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you all. I'm Alex. Calling from Hi, Vietnam. Alex. Cool. Wow. Oh. Awesome. Um, but I, I think I think the teachers mostly, if they if they're serious about teaching online at least, they probably have a computer of some kind. But yeah, I'm mostly I agree. concerned. I'm mostly concerned about the the student side. How is it as a student using this yeah. app with a phone or a mobile device? Um, so if the student can access it, as in they have Safari 14.0 or higher, then it's actually really user friendly. Uh, I have students that use iPad and the great thing about this compared to a lot of the comp competition out there is that all the features are still enabled so they can still drag and drop things um, they can still use their finger to write things so I think that like with any um, interactive classroom there will be a learning curve but once they understand and if they continue with you regularly then it shouldn't be too bad and um in terms of the login process, I feel like entering their name when it says, you know, who are you clicking enter session and then clicking to accept the permissions is quite a streamlined process compared to some of the competitors that make them like jump through all these hoops. So I'm not going to say that it's totally fault free, <laughs> but I definitely think that a benefit of this platform is the compatibility with iPad and so forth. I, that answers my most important question. So yeah, I'm good. No, yeah. it, from from my perspective, so uh, my background is teaching pretty predominantly Chinese students, and with the large scale companies they were with, they were all supported on iPad. So that was what they were looking to have when they transitioned to private teachers. And it's been a struggle because, particularly with screen share platforms like Zoom, they're just not offering the same functionality. Um, over iPad or or phone, so this is a real diamond in the rough, I think. Um, but it actually, it functions really well. What are some of the most common issues that you've had with uh, with teaching on the platform from the students' point of view? Um, it is that the for whatever reason, the um, permissions for camera and microphone are not feeding through somehow. I haven't quite ascertained with my own teaching what the problem is, but I suspect what it is is that they are changing the settings in the permission, like they're swapping to a different camera or a different microphone, and then trying to enter when what I've recently learned is if they do change any of those settings, they have to log out of the browser to refresh it and then come back. And that has tended to work. So that's been the biggest thing is getting that first initial connection going. Um, because once they're in the classroom, there's very little issue at all. I think kids these days are so intuitive with technology that they just assume that they'll be able to drag and drop and, and draw like it's a second nature. So once they're in, it's all fun and games, but um, getting them in sometimes is a bit tricky. I do already have a tutorial. It's um, like a PDF slideshow for parents and students. So I can share that with you, although it's really badly translated into Chinese, but I can go back and, and do the English as well. Excellent. Okay, thank you, Krista. Sure. Um, I do also think that it's worthwhile having a backup plan. So if, if you experience in a lesson, um, all your students can enter, for example, you can always revert to another platform. I did that even before I was using this, like, what am I going to do? And, and often it's something really simple, like I'm going to revert to we, uh, WhatsApp or something. Um, but just to have a backup plan and have the student aware, like if you aren't able to enter the classroom by certain time, I will meet you here instead. So. Okay. Good. Well, thank you so much for joining me. And I am always available 
at info at esl-curriculum.com for questions, particularly about the um, the lessons themselves. I wouldn't say that I'm the expert about remote HQ, although I've been using it for a while. So if anything really um, specific comes up with regard to the platform, get in touch with support at remotehq.com instead of me. Okay, thanks again. Excellent, thank you so much, Crystal. I really Thanks. appreciate Thank it. You so much. Yeah, you Thank bet. You. Thanks for your time. And I'm looking forward to hearing what's next. Well, what's the record again and a forward any questions if I have. Yeah, perfect. Sounds good. And let me know how I can help you guys. Thanks. Okay, Thank cheers. You. Thank you, Bye. take care. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.